Shibro, Father James with Deacon Hank. Hey. Normandy's finest, St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower. Uh, this time of year, there's several things going on that we can connect to St. Therese. Uh, first of all, I was thinking uh, this was 75 years ago uh, the Germans surrendered in World War II. Mm. Wow. And around this time of year, uh, and June 6th, of course, was D Day, 1944. Uh, Therese, Lisieux is a town in northern France, Normandy. Have you ever been, actually? No. no. It's beautiful. Uh, we went there a couple times when, when we were in seminary in Rome and did a little uh, driving tour really around all of France, but spent some time in Normandy, seeing the, the beaches on Omaha, but also wow. visiting. That's cool. Yeah, visiting Carmel, uh, the convent that she was at in Lisieux. It's a quaint, beautiful little town. Uh, Normandy's got some great saints, uh, Louis de Montfort as well. Mm -hmm. But also uh, close to Mother's Day, which is Sunday, mm -hmm. and then Father's Day, which is next month, Therese's parents are canonized saints. That's right. Didn't Pope know. Francis canonized them in 2015 or 17? Yeah, pretty Did, recent. Pretty recent. A couple yeah. of years, three. Uh, Zelly and Louis Martin, uh, their children, so they had nine children. Yeah, big family. Four of them died in childbirth, unfortunately. Five right. of them, the five daughters, all became nuns. Yeah. And then exactly. one of them is St. Therese, who is a, a saint, very popular, doctor of the church. So the parents uh, were uh, instrumental in their daughter's sanctity, and especially with a little flower. It's amazing how many people have a devotion to St. Therese. Yeah, it's a big one among seminarians. Seminarians, yeah. priests, parishioners. I see little... Uh, prayer cards of, of St. Therese. What's the little thing? Uh, Holy Hour. It's like flower. She's known as a little flower because she, she often talked about how she just wants to uh, give God little acts of love the way like a child strews flowers you know, yeah, on, on the ground. Considering the large garden of God's saints, she would be the littlest flower and not like a gigantic, elegant rose, but she was, carried herself with great humility. So it's like little flower power of our <laughs> this is a great little quote uh so also she's um the patron saint which i find fascinating the patron saint of missionaries yeah yeah which is interesting because she really never left carmel uh the the convent in lazu her entire life she made a pilgrimage down to rome uh, when she was a little girl but other than that she didn't go to africa or the jungles of asia wherever she was pretty provincial, and yet... Yeah, she carried the zeal of a missionary, wanting to bring Jesus' love and mercy to you know, all continents. It was one of her great desires in her heart. Uh, but she also wanted to pray for all missionaries, too. So she had this great zeal um, while still being um, in the convent, which is just a cool dynamic of the spiritual life. She's got a quote. She says, my whole strength lies in prayer and sacrifice. These are my invincible arms. They can move hearts far better than words. I know it by experience. It's the, the truth that if we want to be effective missionary disciples, if we want to impact people truly on the level of charity, it starts with prayer and starts with our pure intention, doing the Father's will and having our heart united to Jesus' heart. And from that, then we can go forward and serve. Whereas if it's vice versa, we might be, you know, serving ourselves or just satisfying a need. It's not necessarily pure. So Therese, her deep and fierce love for Jesus and her desire for people's salvation of souls um, is the true heart of a missionary. Yeah, and uh, uh, Thomas Merton kind of commented on the convents and monasteries are kind of like the furnace that kind of keeps churning through prayer and, and sacrifice, um, the fire to spread out, you know, and, uh, um, as like in a military arrangement, if you have people on the front lines, you also need the support in the back, uh, too, with mortar, fire or something. So the convince that uh, contemplative life is the fuel. Yes, she um, also, so she died when she was 24. Right, very young. Yeah. Had Tuberculosis. To, right. Right, suffered immensely um, in her short life. Uh, she wrote, of course, her famous autobiography called The Little Way. A story, or, or story of a soul. Of a soul. Yeah, of a soul. and her, mm -hmm. her spiritual method is, is the, the Little Way. 
Um, do you want to say a couple words about what the little way really? Oh, it's all about. Yeah, it when I read it, it was um, it was really refreshing for me because I think I was coming at uh, you know entering into the spiritual life and becoming a better you know disciple in a very Jansenist way. I'm doing everything wrong, and I, I everything I do is a, is offensive to God. But Saint Therese, in her little way, she didn't see her route of sanctification as doing intense penances or doing huge acts of charity. Her little way was, I'm going to do small acts with all my heart, all this love for Jesus. It doesn't have to be for the person per se, but for Jesus. And I'm going to trust all that to the Lord. And his arms are going to be like an elevator to heaven. So I'm just going to throw my little arms up in the air and wait for Jesus to lift me up to him. And that's his desire. Jesus does desire to draw souls to himself. So she really taps into that. She uses the image of an elevator. It, it had just been invented uh, in 19th century, late 19th century, and she saw one uh, before she entered the convent, and she used that a lot. That she's just a simple little child that who rides God's elevator up to heaven. She also used the image of a kaleidoscope. She Ooh, said we were just cool. simple, colored pieces of paper. <laughs> I like that. But the the light of the world shines through us and, and makes us beautiful. Yeah, the simple the simple acts of love. Mother Teresa would would say that too. Mm -hmm. uh, she obviously followed in the line of Saint Therese. Yeah, taking her name, right, and uh, and as well as Saint Teresa of Avila, who preceded mm -hmm. Therese, and sure. and Therese said she wanted to be as great as Saint Teresa of Avila. Um, mother, what did Mother? Her famous line is like, "You don't need to do great acts, just great love," mm -hmm. something like that. Um, yeah, so. There was a great story, all these great little anecdotes. Um, Therese suffered little humiliations in, in the convent, so um, they would all have to wash. Uh, there was a wash day once a week, and they'd all have to wash clothes uh, together. So it was like there's there's a great picture of all of these nuns <laughs> in this giant pool of hot, hot, filthy water. And this old nun next to her who... <laughs> was kind of annoyed with Therese. Yeah. She kept splashing dirty water in her yeah. face, in Therese's face, and Therese just just silently bore it. And that was her little way. Something so simple as not fighting back or splashing water back uh, was her way of glorifying God and, and showing a great act of love. So clearly any one of us could do something like that. There's sure. how many little ways are there in your life to show a, a kind act of, of love? I know Deacon Hank, you do when I... <laughs> do crazy things um <laughs> light little votive candles outside your room and <laughs> we all have to bear our different crosses <laughs> yeah so Therese is a great one to pray with uh yeah. so much more to talk about her but um spend some time with a little flower and um also uh wish our mothers a happy mother's day and, and thank you parents for your uh your love for us and making us saints god willing amen peace